Hello YouTube, Kenny here, back again, doing another vlog for the second time tonight. Uh, this is technically the fifth video I've done tonight, because I've done some Let's Plays, and I also did a vlog about my gaming haul, and now I'm just vlogging. Um, I'm not even real sure what about. This is going to be one of those vlogs where it's like kind of all over the place, I don't know what I'll get into, but I'm trying to uh, make about a 10 minute vlog. Um, if you find me interesting, be sure to let me know because it justifies making this 10 minute vlog. <laughs> um, well, what can I get into? Let's see. Pseudophedrin, or Pseudophed for short. Uh, I had recently had to take that when I was sick, and I didn't enjoy it. It dried me out to no end. And this was prescription pseudoephedrine. Um, and I don't dry out, like, happily, because having... Okay, this is just my theory, okay? I, I, I haven't been told this by a doctor or nobody. It's just a personal theory, so I could be wrong. But, uh, because I do have psoriasis, all right, psoriasis um, produces more skin cells, thereby, again, my theory, um, pushes more moisture out of your body because your skin absorbs the moisture and it pushes moisture out. So thereby, I believe people with psoriasis become uh, dried out a little bit quicker than people that don't have psoriasis. Um, so, my way of thinking is that with that combined with the pseudofedrin, I was having to drink a lot of water. And I think more than, again, somebody without psoriasis would. Now, again, I could be wrong on that medical assumption, but that's a working theory in my brain. Um, and I say that, again, mainly because the, the skin is producing more skin cells. And if I don't drink water um, more, common than I sh more commonly than I should, then my forehead, mainly up here and right here on my face, becomes so severely dried out that it cracks. Um, and it can just not get pretty. So I usually have to take a wet towel and just kind of, you know, wipe my face down um, at least three or four times a day. Just, just be, again, because it can crack and shed. And it's not pretty. It's not easy. It's not easy living with it. It's really not. It's kind of a pain in the butt, to be honest. But, uh, you know, so again, that's just a theory. That, that combined with the pseudofedrin and that dry me out combating apparently what was some kind of viral thing that was going on with my tongue and fighting the flu and throwing up all kinds of stuff was just oh hated it probably one of the worst weeks I've had in the last five six years um, it just all hit me at once and today oh man today I had such a bad headache I don't know what it was like boom 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 I have never had a verifiable hangover but I'm fairly sure I was kind of close to it um, because right around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I just, my head was swimming. I just couldn't do anything. I was barely getting through. So that, that's, you know, that was fun. Uh, yeah, so being sick sucks overall. Um, hey, you know, one thing I can talk about, and I don't think I've ever really shown this, but going into gaming here, um, I have a special edition Street Fighter controller that I've had, which is very cool, you got the certificate right there, and that's the extra controller that is, a, um, yeah, well, you can see your leg going up and down, you see my point. But this thing, when it first came out, if I remember right, was about twenty nine ninety five, and it's for PS two. Um, and I'm a big Street Fighter fan, 
So I bought it. I got it at GameStop. Uh, and we don't take it at work. I don't know why. Um, but I bought it, and I've had it ever since. Which, which is a really good record for me because, you know, life hasn't exactly been the easiest. There's been points where I've had to sell something to make rent or pawn something to make rent. And, uh, you know, doing that just kind of really helps you identify stuff that is special and that you really don't want to get rid of. You know, right in that point of life, writing, um, being in that state of life, it, I mean, arguments could be made. It's my own fault for making bad choices in life or that it's my family's fault for not raising me right. I don't know. Honestly, I don't care. My life is what it is, and I better it the best I can. Um, right now, I'm very happy. Uh, I've got the love of a beautiful girl, an awesome girl that I'm going to marry, make my wife, and have a family, kids. She's got a great family. I got a great family. So anyway, back on track. Uh, it just it really helps you realize uh, the, the the again the special things in your life that you would never want to part with, and that's that that's one of those things that is something special and. Not only because Chun Li Chun Li is exceedingly hot and is exceedingly good with her thighs. Okay, I'm going a little bit creepy fanboy, but it's it's just one of those things. It's it's really one of those things. And another one of those things is my sealed copy of Final Fantasy on NES that is complete. We got it into the store and I wrapped it back up because it was complete. Map ads. Um, just everything. Everything was in it. And I've had it for about eight years now. So, again, one of those things. It, you know, and it's really cool to have those little things in your life that really stand for something you've been through or that were with you in a period of your life that you just don't want to let go of. And it's it kind of has a security blanket effect. Because when you look at it and you think back... You're kind of living in the past, which I try not to do, but you think back and say, you know what, if this object could talk, it could remind me of things that I have achieved, uh, of trials that I've survived. And it's just, it's one of those things. It's one of those ray of light in a storm of darkness that is life. Philosophy. But... You know, again, it's just it's one of those things. It's really cool. I, I would if you're still watching, I would like to know if you have something like that and what it is. If you can mention it. If it's, you know, something that can be mentioned in public. I'm fairly sure there is at least one person out there that has something either very dirty or very nasty that has that effect on them that they have not let go of, that they never talk about and probably never will. It could be something sexual. It could be something that came out of a dead animal, maybe. I don't know. Maybe maybe some kind of religious belief artifact. But objects like that in life can range a spectrum of things. I mean, I'm fairly sure that somebody has a spoon from when they were a kid that they've hold, held on to, you know? Something like that. Or even maybe something that there was a screw that was part of a bunk bed that was really loose and the kid got off the bunk bed and a second later that screw came out and could have crushed him and he picked up that screw and he held on to it he said you know what this helped me realize how precious life is maybe he didn't realize it at the time but you know it's something to think about and I just got pretty deep especially for 1045 at night wow so there you have it um, objects in life it's really funny how they can hold such sentimental value. Uh, you know, without sentiment in life, I don't think uh, life would be as interesting as it is. Or as comforting, for that matter. Life is such a big combination of feelings and things and just overall human emotion. But then again, if we're human and we have emotions, what about beings that don't have emotion? What is it to them? What is their purpose for going on, other than surviving? Which is obviously a natural instinct. Huh. Well, who knows? Well, that's my 10-minute mark.
Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and uh, just remember that you are an awesome person and you mean something to somebody somewhere that you probably haven't even met. See ya.